Section 6.6 is about solving quadratic equations by factoring. So again, what we're talking about here with quadratic, it's a quadratic equation, it's an equation that has two as its highest exponent. The standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. Because it's an equation, we need an equal sign, and it'll be equal to zero in the standard form. So for example, 3x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0 is, this, is an equation in standard form. And x squared minus 9x equals 2 is a quadratic equation that's not in standard form. If I were to subtract 2 from both sides, I'd be able to write it in standard form. And our first objective we need to talk about the zero product principle. Okay, the zero product principle is the principle that tells us what happens if you're multiplying two quantities together and you get zero. Okay, now we know that the only way to get zero is if you're taking zero times something and this thing could be anything, or vice versa if you have anything times zero. Okay. The only way to get zero in a multiplication product is if it's zero is one of the parts of the product. Okay, and that's kind of what we're talking about and tell me what goes in those boxes. Okay. So what the zero product principle says is that if A and B are real numbers, if A times B is zero, then we're guaranteed that either A is zero or B is zero. Okay, the only way for a times b to be zero is if a is equal to b. I'm sorry, if a is equal to zero or if b is equal to zero. There's no other way for them to multiply together to get zero. Okay. So um, also, the, and what we're saying right here at the bottom is um, one of the numbers must be zero, but both could be zero because it was zero and zero. Yes, you'd get zero. Okay. So we can use this property to solve this equation. Okay. So. I've got an equation right here and I have a product, a multiplication of these two quantities. In order for them to actually be equal to zero, either the first part of the product must be zero or the second part of the product must be zero. So either x minus 3 has to be equal to zero or x plus 5 has to be equal to zero. Okay. Well, I know that if x minus 3 is equal to zero, then the answer would be x equals 3. And I know that if x minus 5 was equal to 0, then the answer would be x equals negative 5. Okay. Now, when we're saying it up here, we're like, you know, if either one of those things happen, it's going to be 0, right? So if x is equal to 3, yeah, this will be 0, because you'll have 3 minus 3 is 0, making this piece 0, times whatever, um, 8 in this case, 3 plus 5 is 8. So this would be the 0 times 8 equals 0 case, which is true. And in the other case, it would be the case of, let's see, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 times 0 equals 0 case, which is true. So if either one of those numbers is true, it works. So both of them are true. Both of them are solutions. So there are two answers to this quadratic equation. And most quadratic equations, as we'll see, will have two answers. Because if either one of them works, then we have zero. So that means that both of them work. Okay. Next page. Okay, so again, we're overviewing what happens here. The reason, flipping back here again, the reason that I was able to use this zero product property on this was that I had a product. I had an expression that was factored or written as a product. So if I'm going to be solving a quadratic equation, my first step is going to be make sure that it's equal to zero, right? Get it in standard form and then factor. I need to write this as a product set equal to zero specifically so I can use that zero factor pro property. Okay? Uh, once I factor it, I just set each factor equal to zero and solve and check. Okay? So let's see how that works here. All right, in the first one, this is a trinomial. It's already in standard form, so I'm going to go ahead and factor this. Coefficient is 1, so that means I'm going to break up that 10. 
that 10 is positive, so I need two positives or two negatives. It's going to have to be two negatives. What goes into 10? Negative 2 and negative 5 add to negative 7. So when I factor this, it's going to factor into x minus 2 and x minus 5 equals 0. So we factored the left-hand side of the equation, x squared minus 7x plus 10 into x minus 2 and x minus 5, and the right-hand side is still equal 0. Okay, so step 2 has been done. It was already in standard form, so step 1 is done. We're going to step 3. Factor, uh, or set each factor, uh, equal to 0. So this is the zero uh, product principle. So I'm going to set the first factor equal to zero. So either x minus two is equal to zero, or x minus five is equal to zero. And if either one of these is true, then the answer, or the result, is going to be true. So let's see. My answers are x equals two. That'll work. And it's also going to work if x is equal to five. Okay, let me just clean that marker up right there. Like, there we go. So two answers again. We get zero if x is equal to two or x is equal to five. And let's check them. Okay, so if I check them, x squared, so that's two squared minus seven times two plus 10. Hopefully it's equal to zero. Yes, it is. Check the other one, five squared minus seven times five plus 10 equals zero. Both of them work. So we can check the solutions in their original equation. Okay, let's try the next one. All right, it is in standard form because it's equal to zero. So we need to factor this. This is a two term. So I um, either have a difference of squares or something in common. There is something in common, since we're gonna start with our GCF factoring that x out. It's going to leave us with x minus 1 equals 0. So I've got two parts of the product here, the first part and the second part, and I want to set each part equal to 0. So x equals 0 is the first part, and x minus 1 equals 0 is the second part. In the first part, if x is equal to 0, then x is equal to 0. And in the second part, if x minus 1 equals 0, then x is equal to 1. So my two answers are x equals 0 and x equals 1. Okay, two more here. In part C, this is not in standard form, so my first job is to get it there. I need this to be equal to 0, so I need to add 24 to both sides. Okay, when I add 24 to both sides, negative 24 plus 24 is equal to 0, so I have my equal 0 on the right-hand side. 24 is not a like term with either of these, so we just get the x squared minus 14x plus 24. 14x plus 24. All right, now we factor. This needs to be factored by uh, noticing that there's coefficient 1. It's a trinomial. So I'm going to take my positive 24. Notice that it needs to add up to, two neg or to a negative, so I'm going to have to have two negatives here. So 24 is, let's see, it's 6 times 4, and 6 times 4 er, is 24, and 6 plus 4 is, that's going to be negative 10, so that doesn't work. 8 and 3, so negative 8 and 3, I'm going to add up to negative 11, that doesn't work either, so 12 and 2, just keep trying things that go into 24, and that one will add up to negative 14, that's the one we want. The others didn't work. So this will factor into x minus 12 times x minus 2 equals 0. So x minus 12 equals 0. And that looks terrible, so let me just erase that. Okay, that's x minus 12 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. So if I add 12 to both sides, my answers are x equals 12 and add 2 to both sides, x equals 2. All right, and the next one. Not in standard form again, so I'm going to start by 
subtracting that 8 from both sides to get it equal to 0. So that's going to be 18x squared minus 8 equals 8 minus 8 is 0. It's, it's two terms, so I'm looking for something in common. I can divide those both by 2. So that leaves me with 9x squared minus 4 equals 0. So I've got my 2 here. I'm just going to leave the 2 alone and continue to factor. This right here is two terms, the binomial. It is a difference of two perfect squares. So I can separate that into the binomial conjugates of 3x plus 2 and 3x minus 2 equals 0. Now in this example, there are three pieces of the product that multiply to 0. So any three of these pieces could be equal to 0. But the first piece doesn't have a variable, so 2 equals 0 is kind of silly because we know 2 is not 0. So we're just going to you know, say this piece can't be 0 since it's not a 0. Okay, That's just like saying you know, if you have 2 times a times b equals 0, you know that one of these unknown pieces has to be 0, and that piece isn't 0 because you know it's a 2. Okay, So the, the 2 piece isn't the 0 piece since there's no variable. So let's try one of the variable pieces. So 3x plus 2 could be equal to 0, and 3x minus 2 could be equal to 0. And we need to figure out what the x value would make those pieces equal to 0. So for the first one, let's subtract our 2. 3x, we are subtracting that 2. So equals negative 2. Divide by 3. So x equals negative 2 thirds. Or, in this one we would have to add the 2, so 3x would equal positive 2, then we would divide by our 3, so x would equal positive 2 thirds. So those would be our two answers. It's supposed to be a comma right there. Alright, let's look at the next page. Alright, we've got some more problems here to solve. The first one right here is not in standard form, so my first step is going to be to put it in standard form. This, we're going to move everything over to this side right here to get it equal to 0. So we're going to have to subtract 30w from both sides and subtract 80 from both sides. It's going to give us 5w squared minus 30w minus 80 equals 30 minus 30 and 80 minus 80, so 0. I know I can divide those all by 5, so let's take a 5 out. That's w squared minus 6w minus 16 equals 0. Now let's keep going, we need to factor this. So this is the coefficient 1 type, so I'm going to look at my 16. And say it's negative 16, so I know I need a positive and a negative, and I want the negative to be larger because it needs to add to a negative 6. So let's try negative 8 and 2 would add to a negative 6. So this right here will factor into 5 times, that'll be a w minus 8 and a w plus 2. So those add up to a negative 6 and multiply to a negative 16. Right, again, right here, 5 is just a number. There aren't any variables with it. So that can't be 0. It's 5. It's not 0. But w minus 8 could be 0 for a certain value of w. And w minus, or plus 2 could be 0 for a certain value of w. If you add 8 to both sides right here, and if you subtract 2 from both sides here, we get that w equals 8 and w equals negative 2 are the two answers.